Charles Street. <sighs> oh, crikey, everybody's here. Whoops. Okay. Put on a professional face and try to do the work. Let's see. Ooh, uh, Polo de Grasa. Crazy J, of course. Ed, g'day. Map Map. Hmm. Can't say I've seen Map Map before. Hello, Map Map. And Handy Dandy. From the US. Obviously, I'm going to guess on the east side of the US. Could be a little bit early otherwise on the west side. Yeah, scratchy, scratchy. Alrighty. This is a... Um, this is the machine we worked on last night, which... Well, I uh, have the battery still connected onto that. Very unprofessional there. Um, this is the one that would die halfway through its booting. And I copied the operating system across to a new... So well, not a new, but a test solid-state drive. And it's still doing the same thing. So I'm not sure what's going on. I ran the diagnostics, just the normal, you know, press the D key sort of thing, the useless diagnostics. And it's coming out complaining about the battery, so I changed a different battery and it did the same thing. So I'm wondering whether it's actually got an SMC issue. So I might just change the SMC on it and uh, see how that goes. I'm not really going to try and use my brain too much on this one. Oh. Hey, ITC Extreme. Been a while since I've seen you. Hope, you've been all, hope you have been doing all right. Hey, Andrew Hurst. How do you say that? Wigan? Wigan? UK? And Nick Basie? Hey, Travis. Ah, Mr. Lockhart. Yes. <laughs> I remember you telling me that my... How does it scheduled stream running and I didn't even know it. That was funny. Thankfully not too many people were there. Would have been a bit of a disaster if a couple of hundred people were there. Okay. You ready to come out? Yes you are. Cool. Hey Dragon. Alright, so we're just going to go all out, do an SMC replacement on this. Okay, to be fair, I will test the I2C line resistors, but I have a feeling it's probably the SMC. Hey, Jacob Anderson, didn't get the notification for this stream, stumbled onto it. Oh, well, better than nothing, I guess. Oh, this feels weird. Ah, I know why. I had my wife here on the microscope. We were trying to get a fairly persistent twee uh, tweezer splinter out of her hand. And anyway, so I had to flip the eye cups up. To it makes it a little bit easier to see things or guide you. I should rather say when you got the eye cups up. Uh, she's gonna have she's got her own streams that will be coming well not streams but she'll have her own videos coming out oh, oh, oh mini Z thank you thank you very much for the five dollars very much appreciate that definitely very much appreciate that especially considering I've got my tax bill and that's gonna be fun I've got a scheduled payment for it but of course well that's a uh, yeah. It's a long bill to pay, which means by the time I finish paying it, I'll be ready for the next one. Let's see, what am I after here? Okay, what I want is to check the resistors on the I2C line for this. And they are... So we've got the charger and the battery. Now, we replaced the charger. There was an issue with that. So, but it is talking to the SMC, so I'm kind of wondering whether there's still some issue in the SMC. So, we'll check these resistors anyway. 
Who knows, it might be like that one we had last night, which involves this board. We have very strange resistor, resistor values on it. I still haven't quite worked out how that came to be. Okay, so they're both 2K, 5380. I'm guessing that's going to be a no stuff. Hey, Father Ted. Can't work through the eye cups or use the screen. Ah, yuck. Yeah, I, I can't handle the screen. I'll use it as a secondary thing, but not as a primary. What have we got? 1.99. That's pretty valid to me. 581 is probably there. One point nine nine, that's perfectly good too. I'm guessing this resistor is a no stuff. I'm having a hard time pronouncing things at the moment. <laughs> Might be a little bit tired or something. Just zooming in to see if anything looks like it's disconnected. Looks pretty normal. Those little 5kc v7 sort of things they always spit their balls out that's entirely normal in the past i have suspected them and replaced them but it never is them well not basically seeing their balls spit out is entirely normal that's basically what it comes down to hey monster Links repair, good day. Oh, you're welcome, thank you. Okay, so it's basically just go for replacing the SMC. So I could be wrong, but hey, who doesn't love an SMC replacement? Man, I'm getting to the end of my tube on this, having to squeeze extra hard to get it out. Now this first bit is just so that the flux can sort of get under these silicon pieces and it just makes it really easy for me to get them off then. Ah, except when I do that. Getting a bit cold. There we go. Alright. Come on down, SMC. Uh, change your life. I really should buy myself the half inch nozzle for these. The 9mm is good for most things, but when you come to try and get an SMC off and things like that, the half inch is definitely going to be a bit more of a winner.
I don't really want to damage this if I can avoid it. Just in case if we replace it and we find that we still have the same problem, then we know at least that that SMC is still okay to be used for other 165 boards. So we'll baggy that up. Hey Lewis, Portugal, hello. Eight two zero double O one six five possible. Now the trick is, even though we've bagged it up and no one can see what I'm doing, right, even though we've bagged it up, we've got to remember to indicate whether it was a success or fail by the end of this process. Otherwise, we'll just have another part in a bag that we don't know whether it's good or bad. I've already got enough of those. Do I reapply the silicon? No, I don't. In some ways, you probably don't have to because you are going from lead-free lead solder to leaded solder. So there's probably a bit more ductility in the leaded solder compared to the lead-free. good oh I get these damn scratchy noses okay put that to the side now we've got to get ourselves another 165 and hope that we have a decent SMC on it uh, let's see 165 no SMC oh geez let's hope we do have actually have a 165 with an SMC on it no SMC. It's going to be real unfortunate. No SMC. No SMC. Come on, I surely haven't used them all up. I'm fairly sure I bought a bunch the other week. No SMC. Okay, I'm starting to get scared. 34, 37, that's no good. Can't do that. Yeah, it's going to be real bad if I can't find an SMC. Digging through my pile here. It's bad because you order a whole bunch of these boards and then somehow or another you just... Time slips past and... Ah, oh damn, no SMC on that either. Getting scared. Yeah, eBay junk. 3437, 3023... More junk. Looks like more junk from Ben Nash. 6.5. No SMC. Oh, sweet Bridget. This is not good. Come on. Surely must be one. 6.5. An SMC. Ooh. That was cutting it close. Damn. Looks like Lewis has already been there and he got interrupted. Oh, I've got another board to do after this anyway, so... That's a pretty beaten up SMC, that one. I might see if I've got another one. So usually I buy 65, uh, 00165s and 3437s in like batches of 3 or 4. 3437... I think where... I think where things have gone wrong is that... The last set that I ran out of were 3437s, and so I bought a whole bunch of those, and I didn't bother to check my 165 levels. 3437, 2838, you. Yeah. 3437 with SMCs. Yeah. So this is my last SMC for the 165 so I'm gonna have to sadly yet again 
spend more money than I want to and get some 165 boards sent across in a hurry because you can be pretty much guaranteed that next week I'm going to end up with a bunch of board jobs that are all 165s and all wanting SMCs What's the dimensions of my wick? This is Tech Spray Tech Spray 1823. So um, yeah, if you look that up, I've got the 25 foot roll. You can get shorter rolls than that. I'm guessing it's a 2.3 millimeter wide. It's a pretty good length for this sort of stuff. Scratch nose. Hey, console wizard, welcome. Travis, you ordered a point five. Oh man, of oh, the Barlows. That's unfortunate. Well, see how you go with it. As you said, you never know. You might like it. I found it just painful. My point five is still sitting in the packaging after about 10 minutes of use I agree that's not a large amount of use but it was enough for me to realize it was going to break my neck damn nose and everything's getting really itchy here someone's talking about me <laughs> I thought it was if you got hot ears Yeah, let's hope this SMC is good. Ah, I just realized no one said, what happened there? Sorry folks, my apologies. Alright, that's a damn messy looking SMC I gotta say. It's as bad as the look on the floor right now. Alright, let's get this one prepped. They were on stamps. I always forget which one of these holes is the right. There it is. Yep. By the way, if you're a FlexBV user, FlexBoardView user, there's a new beta version, beta version, whatever you have, pronounce it. Um, 1115 available for Windows and Linux. So, uh, yeah, you can get a hold of that if you want. I've also made some, although it doesn't matter to people who are already licensed, but for those who aren't, I've made some improvements so that the whole getting the license thing installed or set up is easier. Because for some reason, every now and then, uh, I don't know whether it's a keyboard issue or character map issues or whatever, but 
it just refuses whatever license information people have been putting in, even if it looks pretty much valid. So in triple one five and onwards, I've added a um, facility where you can load a pre-existing license file, and I will make it so that when people purchase FlexBV, it gives them a link to that file. So they can just download... Man, that's driving me insane, that itching. So they can then just download their license file. They don't have to do any manual input or anything like that. I know, Derry. Hello, Toastech. Yes. Or at least, I, I don't know no Derry, but I have heard of it. So you're not completely unknown. I think I need more flux here. You're allergic to the SMCs, quite possibly. Ugh. Man. It's hard work squeezing that out. It shouldn't be, but it is. Yeah, hoping that if I can just sort of tease the surface of those pads, it'll be enough that the flux action will get in there and clean them out a bit. I am going to be using balls on this. This is a really dirty SMC. Try that. Um, we use the American. The main, obviously, the main thing with the British one is you've got the pound symbol there, and whereas we have the dollar symbol, so that's the primary differentiator. But of course, we also we do have the letter U on our keyboard, so we can correctly spell words like color, and honor, and neighbor. Do you refrigerate those? No, I don't. I know you're supposed to, but I don't. There's a lot of things that you're supposed to do and you don't. cheaper for me to just get a new tube each time of say I kill the flux or whatever than it is to run a fridge that will maintain it at the right temperature for the duration of its life. Oh my god, let's check that's under control. I'm mainly doing the wicking on this one because I want to do the balls on it. And so I want it to be fairly flat. Also acknowledge there are no H's in words. Like H. Now I, I know one of my SMC stencils fell down here the other day. I was moving stuff around and I saw the SMC stencil try to take a leap of death. So I come out of here, man. I don't want to be used for no stencil. Ah -ha, found you. Ha -ha. Wow, this itchy nose is actually getting out of control. Anyone would think I'm been like snorting something. I can assure you, I most certainly have not. Maybe it was the ice cream I was eating.
I really don't know what causes me to get this nose itch syndrome. I also at times suffer the phenomena of um, the sunlight will make me sneeze. I know it sounds weird, but it, it really legitimately does happen. Um, they're not exactly sure why it happens, but uh, it uh, is a known thing. You go out in the sunlight and bam, you start sneezing. Ah. I just cleaned you. Damn it. Get some itch nose syndrome playing on the PlayStation. That's crazy. That's, oh, I wonder, wonder what drives it. Because like I said, I mean, I do not under any normal, under normal circumstances get a nose itch like this. But whenever I sit down and stream, I start getting it real bad. And, um, oh man, it drives me mad. It's not the work, because I'll work all day down here, and not once will I get the nose itch. Allergic to photons, yeah. Toast taker could be maybe that, although I do, like I said, I do still wonder though, because I don't get it during my normal work. And I do not feel confident with this stencil. It feels like it hasn't been drilled through properly. I'm going to get a different one. That stencil looks like one that you'll use and you'll put the balls down and everything and then the balls will get reflowed onto the chip and at that point you'll realize that they've also captured the stencil between the greater circumference or greater radius of the ball and the stencil. Yay, someone didn't clean their stencil. Come on, boys, get out of there. I suppose I'll just use the soldering iron. I was kind of not wanting to do that, but... Very nice. Hey, Pinov. Why balls and not paste? Uh, how shall I say this? Uh, my mood. I kid you not. It's strictly a mood thing right now. Yeah, see how the holes in this one? They're much. They're more. The walls are consistent from top to bottom. So yeah. Let's get some captain tape. Balls are mainly. <laughs> hey, Brown. Oh, by the way, everyone, thank you very much. I clocked over one million views. Not one million views. One million minutes of view um, for the month. So that's the first time I've reached one million for the month. So it's uh, it's a small milestone for me. It's not truly marvelous. It's not like a million subscribers or anything, but you know, it's um, it's another one of those things you can sort of tick off and say, well, I have made it to a million minutes of viewing for the month. Next step is to get to about twenty thousand subscribers. That'll be interesting to get to. You're getting rich. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> hey, Andrew, Drew. I had to step out, eh? You know, catch yourself some uh, black sausage. What do they call that stuff there? 
Um, damn it. Haggis. No, that's that's the pudding thing, isn't it? Uh, you scots are crazy people. But the crazy thing is you guys actually consider that your charm. A bit like the Irish. I'm no I'm not comparing the Irish and the Scottish, but yeah. I know that causes literal wars. Okay, balls for today. I think we're gonna go. I'm pretty sure we go 0 0.35. I can't get a 0.4 in there. 0 0.4 just sits on top too much. Black pudding. Uh, deep fried Mars bar. No. Deep fried Mars bar is like death. Okay, because these balls tend to squirm around a lot, a great deal, I will, wow, this actually is moving along really slippery because of all those balls. Might have to wash them off. Uh, console wizard, that jig is actually part of, um, where is it? It's part of just a generic board holder. It's a removable piece out of a generic board holder. I think I've got it listed on my website of parts that I use. It's, it's, it was just a happy coincidence that it matches an SMC. Oh, crikey. Now, if I can get some spare time and spare money, I will actually start producing useful SMC jigs for everybody to use. Damn it. Something that will make this go a hell of a lot quicker. But that's, like I said, it's a bit of money and a bit of time away. But I do hope to get there soon. It seems to be really my calling, I find, personally, in whatever industry or hobby I like to get into, I tend to find myself becoming a toolmaker. So while I will do things like, say, fly planes or do electronics or whatever, overall I tend to become more of a toolmaker. In fairness, though, when it comes to programming, I am not. So maybe programming is my true profession after all. Just got to get these excess balls off. We don't want them melding into each other when we do the reflow. It's always such a shame to waste all of them. And you can't really just squeegee them off. That doesn't work, because what happens is they have a tendency to dig into these pits, into the holes, and draw out the ball that is in there. So you do have to individually just take them off. If I could tilt this whole thing, then that would probably work a little better. But the electrostatic behavior tends to mess with a lot of the ideas that you have of just simply sweeping things off. Okay, that looks good. Now we go through the first part of this process, which is to melt them down with no flux. And people are like, what the hell? What are you doing? You're crazy, man. But no, it's the way to do it. Whew. 
Tom George. Well, that's an interesting statistic. Now, there's a very important reason why I don't put flux down on these the first time. Because otherwise, if you put flux down, all that happens is the flux boils and spits the balls out. So what you want is you want the balls to deform and then they sort of partially stick to the sides. And then you apply just a eensy weensy little dash of flux. Not a lot. Just to make them melt a bit. Right. And then you come back and do it again. And this time they will not spit out. But then instead they'll reflow and stick. At least in theory. Theories are great. There we go. And best of all, no spitting. Oh hell no, definitely not a Lewis amount. Ha <laughs> No. Oh, did he now? So, so Father Ted. I can. It's hard to get a read on that chap sometimes. Some days he loves me, some days he hates me. Okay, that ball there is loose, so we'll try and convince it to sit down and be a good ball. I can't really touch him though. That one there is also looks a bit loose. We may still lose one or two when we lift the stencil off. Open Mini Z, uh, that's part of the problem is that I don't know yet what my specs are going to be. I need to experiment and um, yeah, determine determine what it is, how I want it to be done. Which is why I need to spend the money and get my own setup. It's only going to be about six, seven hundred dollars for my own setup. It's not going to be great. The precision and everything else is not going to be that fantastic. But it should be enough for the purpose of um, this experiment. And then if it does work, then I can shove it into... I'll get someone overseas or whatever to put it into production. And then everyone else can have it. Okay, I'm just fighting here with the SMC slightly. I don't want to chip it. There we go. Looking pretty. That's the other thing, uh, Open Mini Z, is uh, yeah, what materials can you have? Because, like, this is, I don't know what they call it, sin, sin rock or something like that, some sort of FRP. Just going to reflow this again, make sure that everything is attached. Okay, it seems like nothing's drifting. Uh, we did lose one ball there. Blast. How did I not see that? Is it still attached in there?
Did I just miss a ball? This is certainly the more precarious side of things. Because when you're trying to place a ball, it can be very easy to accidentally knock it to something else, and then, yeah, before you know it, you're in trouble. Do I have a Jack Daniels when I'm finished? Mm, maybe if I was still a drinker. Certainly not one of those anymore. It is downright maddening trying to do this. Get the smaller tweezers. If I can't get it this way, I'll have to dry the chip right off so that there's no flux. Because right now what's happening is the flux actually... It's funny how that happens. I'll just squeeze that ball clean in half. Got it. Now what's concerning me is this ball here is actually too big. So I have a feeling it might have eaten that other ball. Yeah, Nick Basie, you're actually quite right. I should have done that. You're absolutely right. Tell you what, we'll do it with this one. Well, there's the goddamn ball. How did I not see that? You gotta love it how light reflections and all that sort of jazz can make you completely miss things. Uh, it looks like they're not... Have I got the wrong... Admittingly, this has taken longer than I had planned. You're off by a rope or column, rather. Yeah, people were saying if you'd done it using paste it would have been done by now but I'll be honest and say that it's either or I think it could have been just as much drama going paste you really just can't tell okay that's popped on already Okay, open menus, if you want to send me an email, yeah, we'll have a chit chat. When you watch, this is not going to solve anything in the end. I'm still going to have the battery issue. 
But hey, at least we got to do an SMC. What's that junk in there? Off the excess alcohol. I gotta say, for a ball solution, a lot of those look a little inconsistent. That's a scratch, fair enough. Uh, speaking of itchy noses, mine stop now. It's very weird. Top left second pad, what are you talking about? Oh, what's Dragon trying to say? Dragon, what are you talking about? Too high. It's not really, it's actually, it's just a grayer pad. Or are you talking about on the SMC? Picky man, picky nose. Hello, ZX. Not seeing any major. I think it's an optical illusion in many cases. On the board, yeah, I think it's a. It's just a grey pad. I'd classify that as an optical illusion from my perspective here. So it seems like I'm going a little bit slow, it's just, yeah, it's 11 o'clock at night, so I am taking it a little easy. Just seeing how my alignment is. That's with an acceptability. It's got a tiny little push down. Yeah, whatever. Okay, here we go. The dance will begin. Let's see who chickens out first, me or the chip. You don't want to hit it directly because it'll just blow it clean off the pads.
Come on, when are you going to jump? Okay, now we play the game of chicken. There we go. Aren't you dancing yet? There you go. We nearly failed at the game of chicken. Hey, Gasman44, welcome. Yeah, it's a game of chicken because you see the first couple of movements and you think, ooh, it's reflowed. But really it hasn't. It's more just shuffled in, but not yet quite reflowed. Hey, Vogon, welcome. Uh, w. How do you pronounce that? W. Loaded, loaded him. Yeah. With a name like that, I'd almost mistake you for being Welsh. Then again, that could be a horrendous insult or something, I don't know. Very difficult to make sure you don't get killed over in the UK at times. Simply because you accidentally guess something wrong. Like, calling... A Scottish person Irish or something like that. Very dangerous, very dangerous. Yes, quite busy this week and I'll probably be quite busy next week. Yeah, busy is good. I am getting to the point where I have to start declining new um, business to business jobs because I don't want to reduce the quality, the service turnaround times, and things like that of my existing clients. But it's a, it's a difficult game to play because if they're all having quiet weeks, then you think, well, you know, I could have taken on those other people, so yeah, it's a risk. It can be a bit like the hotel industry where you deliberately overcommit um, or Like, if you've got 100 rooms in your hotel, then you generally tend to overcommit, say, 5, maybe 10%, depending on the season, uh, excessive bookings. And then, because you're relying on the fact that there's always a percentage of people who don't turn up, even though they pay for their bookings and everything else, they just don't turn up. But, of course, every now and then it all goes wrong, and everybody turns up, and that's always a fun thing to deal with. But because pretty much all the other hotels are doing that, you're kind of in it as a group. And so when you do tend to overcommit, you just call up the other hotels and go, look, you know, we've overcommitted our rooms here. Um, yeah, you've got a spare one, we'll send these people your way. So it tends to work out. Generally, yeah, like I said, it, you've changed that percentage depending on the season. I can't remember whether we used to increase or to decrease it around Christmas time. And it certainly was different. Are you just doing Macs or iPhones? Yeah, Macs and iPhones, that's basically it. Every now and then I'll do a special job. But overall it's just Macs and iPhones. And I don't really do iPhones that much. I will get the odd person who requests it and if I feel like it's a job that is within my capabilities then fine I'll have a shot and if I can't do it or if I get 10% into it and I sort of think yeah I've kind of overstepped my limits here then I'll send it off to somewhere like um, Bill of A1 Mobiles in Sydney uh, Melbourne rather sorry Bill to be fair he's in Geelong so <laughs> it's not really Melbourne Melbourne anyway Alright, so we're going to boot this. Hopefully it boots. <laughs> yeah, and um, we're going to see if it gives us the error complaining about the battery again. So for that, we're going to do diagnostics, which is D. Plug it in. Well, we've still got to 
spin, so that's good. Ah, Vladimir, I need to talk to you, buddy. Um, are you on Discord or anything like that? Uh, can you send me an email, if possible? I need to talk to you. Something important. Don't worry, you're not in trouble or anything like that. I'm just more hoping you might be able to actually help me out. Uh. Chill for Bill, that's it, yeah. English, as a belief, bad donkey. Hey, Kappa. All right, now we gotta wait. Oh, all right, okay. Well, email would be good if you can do that. I would greatly appreciate that. I've already got some things on the roll, but I was kind of hoping, given your geographical and political position in the world, you um, would be able to help us out here. Vladimir, please report to the principal's office. Ah, two minutes to wait. What am I going to do for two minutes? Sit here and talk to people? Violation of good living. Learn a British accent and you can call everyone names and the British will get the blame. Ah, oh, well, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Since I'm from Adelaide, it, uh, I'm already off to a reasonable start. But then again, what part of England or Britain? Because, I mean, you guys have got such dynamic accents depending on what regions you're from Australia far less so but uh, certainly over there in the UK Britain, Great Britain England I have seen a chart of how those all differ and what they all mean but I never remember Kappa you build no I'm repairing this one Kappa actually a forbidden 303. Oh, come on. A minute to go? Crikey. Will it blow up? Well, the good thing is at least we know the SMC on that one works as well, so... Brits are to blame for everything. Oh, shame. Poor Brits. What did they ever do? If you don't ask the Americans, they'd say they won the war. Or at least the European war. Kitties are good. Kitties are good. Yep. Well, they did wake me up this morning quite a lot. And I was a little uh, frustrated with that because I only got about three hours of sleep. And believe me, uh, three hours of sleep is really not enough. What's this? We don't do well at Eurovision. Ah, shame. I, I'm sure you can g live with not being great at Eurovision. Yes, the Soviets would definitely like have a word on that. There's a lot of there's a lot of parties in the whole World War history that don't really get the sort of recognition for the parts that they played. Battery needs to be replaced soon. Oh man. Maybe okay, that SMC maybe all right, let's try yet another battery. That actually is a different message. Yes, that is a different message. The message I got before was something like cannot communicate with your battery. Whereas this one is your battery needs replacing, which it definitely does. Alright, so that is different. So I think maybe the SMC was faulty. That's the other thing, is you can have a faulty SMC and it doesn't necessarily kill your whole machine. It's just one portion of the sensors or something like that are faulty. So we're going to put the discretion filter on. I'm going to fire it up again. And see if we can get a boot all the way. What are your thoughts in Australia being in Eurovision? Yeah, that's kind of... Um, a little weird if you ask me. Australia has the problem of we are a commonwealth, you know, of the British um, 
empire at some point in the past but in the region that we are in predominantly being surrounded by south asia we kind of feel a little bit out of place we do have new zealand as our brother but oops new zealand beats us at so many things that we kind of feel like we have to find someone else that we can compete with yeah, new zealand is just better at us but pretty much everything did that just crash? It did too. Damn. So we've still got the same problem. Alright, this is definitely driving me up the wall a little bit. Uh, crap. Thank you, Vladimir. Thank you. I will get to that after I finish the stream. Alright. I'm just going to have to ask people, have any of you had the situation where an OS install will cause the whole board to shut down and it's not the SSD? Because this is a clone of the SSD that was in here and it's doing the same thing. It doesn't restart the board. It causes it to completely shut down. And if I use a different OS stick, it um, it works fine. So there's some command in the OS that is causing it to shut down the whole system. Hey, Onel, welcome. You're up early. I suppose it's pretty hard for you to sleep with your pains and everything else. <laughs> Suits, come on. The, the rabbit hole is fun. For now. I mean, it's so close to being working. That's the trouble. But anyway, I suppose rabbit holes, that is the very nature of them, isn't it? Okay, so this is my test one. And this should, should boot all the way through. We can take that away. Does it work the power supply put in without battery? Um, I believe it does the same thing even without the battery. This is running off a DC power supply. And we do have this strange issue where it takes a long time for the Apple logo to come up after the bong. Illegal opcode? Yeah, I was thinking something like that at ZX. Yeah, maybe it's corrupted and because of the corrupted OS it does that. If it works on another OS, the Mac OS or file system is bad. Backup, clean install, okay. Now, Pernov, I was hoping you'd chime in. That's kind of where I'm heading now. I was thinking maybe I can take this drive, plug it into another Mac, run um, disk uh, aid on it and see if it comes up all right. Yeah, so this one works just fine. But I still don't know why it's got that large delay after the bong before it shows the Apple logo. On the upside we did fix up the battery communications error so I suppose that's one win and from here we will go to the other administration office and see how we go okay. crikey that was bad Amy region cause long post uh, All right, Pianov, that's a good point. All right, what I might try is I might put my test um, stick in, reinstall something like Catalina, and see what happens. Maybe they'll fix up the ME region, I don't know. Don't forget to mark the other SMC. Hmm. The question is, is it really dead? I guess we'll say... Possible, bad, battery, section. So it works, but 
not quite perfect as we want. Arnold G, we've replaced the SMC. Okay, we'll try an EFI update. We'll do that when I get to it if later. Okay, that's my next step here. Alright, well I guess we'll move to the next computer in that case. Because like I said, this what needs to follow on that one is to be done in the other office. Ah. Okay, so get our next machine, which is trusty old A1278. to get myself a new container with magnet should do go to sleep no way no 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 too early to go to sleep it's not even midnight yet all right the problem with this one uh, what was the problem with this one unfortunately this is a combo job and all the information spread across us. Uh, let's see. Clock issue, U2600 replace. Trace pair on 2605. Still have clock issues. Uh, okay, well I don't really know what's going on in terms of... I'm seeing the word clock issues being dropped there, but I'm not sure whether they mean it's booting or not. So I guess we'll just try boot it and see what happens whoops well, there we go revealed all the information hey Aussie geek yeah we're not on stupid daylight savings here so it's still not even midnight yet I'd be very happy when daylight savings finally kicks the bucket and is no longer a part of a modern sane society ah oh, g'day Paul welcome Oh yes, by the way, I did see the mention about the the Bockies winning the World Rugby. Uh, Castle Lager. Johan Boysen. Thank you. Interesting, I'm surprised your name... Was your name normally spelt with a Z or an S? Because I know Boysen's with a Z. Um, I had a Boysen as my boss. Okay, looks like we don't have a boot. I'm guessing that's what the issue is. We've got a charge, but nothing's coming up. Damn you, Ben. So I'm just cursing the person who sent this one. Oh, well. Oops. Shows how long it's been since I've done a 1278. I went straight for the pentalobe driver to get the bottom screws out when it's actually, you just want good old fashioned Phillips. There it is. Keyboard wet. Alright. Uh, Sending in our predictions. No, that one's actually too big. Try that. I guess we'll find out, won't we? I do find the sound of unscrewing these screws and likewise on iPhones has a little bit of an ASMR type effect like when I listen to Jason Vilma pulling apart iPhone you know, taking boards out of iPhones it definitely has a pleasant kind of sound to it uh, 
Okay, okay. Let's see what hellish platform we are having to deal with here. Uh, check the lid for wet spots. Funnily enough, it's dead set clean. Now I can see a bit of liquid here, but that, I'm guessing, is from the rework. Naturally, we disconnect the battery. Oh, wow, running it. Wow, this is actually a new issue. It's a February 2015 hard drive. So that means this must have been sold, you know, late 2015. Whatever. The DC inboard sucks. It's not too bad though. Now I will check the sys clock area, but I want to have a look around first. I don't want to prejudice myself too soon. A little bit of corrosion in there. I hope that SM uh, I hope that SMC wasn't reflowed with it actually still having the edge bonding. Keyboard's not in properly, so that could have Although it was close enough. Close enough. The, the backlight on the other hand was not. I don't know why I'm putting that back in because I'm going to have to yank it out in a second. Yeah, I know it does look like that, doesn't it? So it may have shifted the balls around, but it wouldn't stop it from turning on though, or at least not trying to. Got some good fingerprints to make sure we can verify the accused. So there is a, that little bit of corrosion there, so maybe what we're looking for is on the other side. What is this? It's probably a 3115, I'm guessing. Three one five. I could probably save myself a lot of time and just drop an existing one that I've repaired in here. Try the power now that I've unhooked the battery. All right, why not? Why not? We're taking suggestions from the audience tonight, are we? And it's MagSafe one. A green light. We've got power coming up. So we've got fan spin, but we've got nothing else basically. So it definitely feels like it would be a clock type issue. <laughs> we've got no energizing of a display. So we get SO, but no energizing of a display. Alright, let us commence with the uh, investigation. No, it's not quite a full spin. No troubles at all. T6 for these. T6 we have. What's Pionov saying? You unplug the LCD. God damn you, Pionov. Why didn't you tell me that before I... Mind you, we didn't get a bong. But yes, you're quite right. Uh, suggestions from the audience are now hereby closed due to confusing the technician. Yeah, I'm not sure whether I actually yanked it or whether it was... Interesting development. There's no fan spin now. 
Is there a screen shooting at things? Yep, yeah, no fan spin. Green light, no fan spin. Let's try it with the screen disconnected again. Is there a screen shorting things out? Come here. Yeah, we've got a fan spin now. Something's going on with the screen. Even that's just weird. Would not have expected that. Coincidental. Let's plug it back in and try again. There's no burning marks or anything. Mind you, I mean it could just simply be protecting itself. Come on, surely that's just coincidental. Hey, Farfan. Ah, we got fan spin, yep. That was purely coincidental. Must have just been a mag safe sitting silly on it. I was going to say, that'd be a very unusual situation. Not to say it can't happen, I mean, hell, we found ourselves a 13k resistor in a place where 384 should be yesterday so yeah there's I'm not uh, killing off all options straight away Paul Gallant, no it's not booting it'll fan spin so we get an SO but that's all we're getting so I'm just going to take it out and that will give me a chance to look over, see what's been done. Could be the clock area. There were, there are comments about the clock in the service sheet. Hey Rodrigo. So my biggest complaint for the 1278s is just the sheer number of cables this thing has. Microphone. Where's the damn microphone? I mean, overall, the chassis looks perfectly good condition. Oh. Is this really a MacBook? I sincerely hope so. see what secrets are going to be revealed to us. Oh, for sure, yeah. PC laptops are a hundred times worse. Yeah. I'll sooner work on a MacBook every day than touch a PC laptop. Okay, that's been smashed on the corner there. May or may not be part of the situation. Think I'm gonna have to take the heat sinks off. Alright. Okay, what do we got going on here? The crystal. Is the crystal being effed up? So we've got someone running a wire here. 
So something has happened in the crystal area. Is that correct, that wire? Three, one, one, five. Yeah, I know it looks like it's touching the pad, but I'm kind of thinking it probably is actually meant to. Dun, dun, dun. That's that one there. Yeah, it's meant to. It's meant to touch that pad. Yeah, there's a lot of flux on this board because there wasn't really much point the person leaving it off. Um, yeah, taking it off because it was just going to be handed up to me anyway. Okay, my question will be, is there a veer under this test pad and that hasn't made contact? And I doubt it because this should be a pretty straightforward circuit going to nowhere. I honestly can't tell if that clock chip's been replaced or not. I'm thinking maybe. Let's strip everything off. Let's have a full look at this board. So obviously there was some damage around the clock area. Now the question is, has it been repaired appropriately? Do we need to redo it? Uh, my general policy is yes. Just out of habit more than anything else. It's not a strict direct lack of confidence per se in what the other person has done. It's just a case of sometimes things get missed. So it's the easiest way to take yourself back to the original situation. sniff around. Also see where that veer that we saw before the ground that had the bit of the green tinge. Alright, uh, straight up I can see something's been screwed with there. Now that looks like it goes to a part but it looks like the part is a no stuff. So does that um, by the D1? Yeah, Arnold will get around to doing that sort of stuff, but it's easier for me to first just look for the obvious things. Okay, this is it, R5291. You're a no stuff, so you don't matter. You were a pull up, but since you're a no stuff, no care. Uh, the melt look is yeah, from the flux. Is that a dodgy trace or is that a the bug wing or something. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a weird coloration. Yeah, Rodrigo, what it is, yeah, it's just a bug wing there. Um, what happens is, yeah, these people take on these jobs and sometimes, you know, they're just not able to get them all the way, all the way to the end. And so they send them down to me as a different set of eyes in the hope that you know, maybe I can sort it out. I gotta admit, it's a little bit frustrating at times because you do end up with more rabbit holes than not and of course the worst thing is you are charging a business to business rate and subsequently you sort of tend to spend more time 
the less money. And that's not a good thing. Everything else really looks quite good around here, so I think we'll go back to that whole clock area, redo it, and see what happens. Because I'm not really seeing anything jumping out at me. Like, this whole area often is corroded. Just with surf corrosion, surface corrosion, things like that. Oh yeah, where was that veer that we looked at? Where are you? That one there. So you control off that resistor. It really does just look like surface creation, but we're going to have a look at... That's it there. Hmm. <coughs> so that veer goes up to these resistors above the SMC, uh, caps rather. Let's see if we've got continuity there. Yeah, it, it's difficult, isn't it, Arnold, when you, you're trying to follow along with the diagnosis and you're kind of obscured by the... Okay, that's fine. You're obscured by the limitations of, well, the camera, two-dimensional only, and the coloration. kind of puts you at an unfair advantage. I mean, nothing in here is really jumping out at me. There's a bit of plastic goop there. But I don't see any caps screaming out. The biggest thing I see here is this diode is a little bit iffy, but in its soldering, but uh, that's certainly not an issue. So, let's work on this. Maybe it's just a bad wire job. I mean, it seems okay. It seems intact. But we'll get rid of this stuff. Yeah, that just crumbled off. I might take that crystal off. I have a feeling it could have got cooked. Uh, DLMs, yeah, I cannot legally distribute any third-party files with Flexboard View. It's just the limitation, you know, being in Australia, we have a... Um, we have a uh, free trade agreement with the United States, and part of that free trade agreement basically says that companies like Apple and whatnot can just simply swoop in without any in hin any hindrance and go and take me to court if I do anything like that. So yeah, uh, I'm sorry to say, but it's just not an option. And as it is, yeah, you can get those board files anywhere on the internet these days. Ten seconds of searching around, you'll find it. Just Google it. Google the board number you're after, and then board file, board view, 
and lo and behold you will see it. Uh, helps if I put some solder down for it to sit on. Hey Greg, did I say hello to you before Greg? Apologies if I didn't. He's too busy gawking at Anel and his busted body. Yeah, the wrath of Apple. I really don't want to deal with it. And there's no real reason for me, I mean, to do it. The boards are out there. Ten seconds of Googling. And away you go. And the other thing is, Flexboard View is not meant as just a um, Apple system. It's a generic board viewing program for all different formats. Which is useful if you're, say, a manufacturer and you want to share the layouts not for other people who need to repair their boards like maybe you've got service agents and things like that but you don't want to give them the full um, the full design files so what you can do is you can export to a more limited output that Flexboard View will read and your problem solved so you take you know, your uh, service agents can repair the things and you don't risk losing your valuable intellectual property from your perspective. Now hopefully I don't cook this crystal too. There we go. They're usually pretty tough, the crystals, but you try not to cook them too much. What will tend to happen is they'll just drift a little bit. Like instead of being, say, 12 megahertz dead on, they will um, have drifted a fraction but it should still be within spec. Yes, it's a 315. Sorry, 3115. Yeah, that's down. Love it when it's that quick. If this doesn't work, then I will change the actual controller chip. Let's see, they actually do have continuity up to here. Yep, okay. Depends on the type of crystal. Most of them are sealed, so you should be okay. I mean, hell, half the time you pop them and then put them in uh, sealed environments so that you can keep them temperature controlled so that they're more stable. Admittingly, it's not in like an open alcohol wetness situation. trying to get a feel of how I want to best tackle this one. Are there many board view software out there now? They there's quite a few board view programs out there. They're all different. I don't think any are based on open board view other than open board view itself and flex board view. I think most people, other people have just written their own engines. But yeah, there's a few. bit like word processors or spreadsheets or yeah there are options don't worry I'm not connecting it to that cap 
and just positioning it so that I can get a little bit of solder down on that line. Naturally the solder is not going on to the yeah, typical, so flipping typical. And yeah, free bugs with my software and you get the pleasure of being able to commiserate with Lewis when he yells at it. That's right, you can have a shared experience by buying Flexboard View. Half of me says I should have just run the wire all the way up to that, but uh, let's just see how it goes first. Flexible bin use needs more Easter eggs. I tend to agree with that. Uh, it sounds like a reasonable request to me. Right. Now this is me just being paranoid. Tell you what I'm a little sus about is this heat sink is bent like heck. I don't know how people manage to do that. So what did you do? to find a way to bend that heat sink. Alan, at least if you don't need to upgrade, then at least you can still keep using it. That's the other thing is I have licensed Flexible View in such a way that I feel like it um, is the fairest I can offer to the community without completely you know, um, leaving myself destitute. Kind of like you know, if you buy Office 2010 or whatever then you can use that perpetually and it's only if you want to upgrade to the very latest that then you pay again. But otherwise you keep using Office 2010 as Office 2010. Now of course that is why a lot of companies now do not like the perpetual license system and that they will force you into a license subscription system. Yeah, someone has bent that, something pretty severe. I'm going to plug the speaker in because I want to see if we do get a bong or anything. I know it's the microphone that I'm trying to plug in here or something. I just don't care. Okay. What's that? And we need something to boot. It's got flashy lights on it. So we use this. Hopefully the flashing lights will reveal to us if it's booting or not. Okay, we've got a fan spin. Now let's see if we getting any activity on our USB port. No bong as yet. And then again, sometimes people turn that volume right down. Does not look promising though. 
So I may replace that RTC chip. Hmm, fan's going up to full spin. Has the SMC been stuffed? That's the other possibility. Yeah, that fan spin is just going full pelt. So, uh, why didn't I just check to see if we had 1226? I'll try that again. And just measure our PV bus G3 hot. Ah, oh, of course, on the fuse by the screen connector. Dreadful how I forget these things. It's not a very big fuse, but it is there. This one here. That's our G3 hot. Mind you, we do have green lights. Uh, 1256. So it is up and running. The other possibility is yes, there's a short actually. But then again, it wouldn't really. I can't imagine it getting to SO state if that was the case. So we'll change that clock chip. If that doesn't make any difference, then we may still have to look at the SMC since it has had the reflow or something done to it. Yeah. I'm trying to cook this chip. The big one above it, not this little one. I don't remember that pad being looking like that. Yeah, that should be a full square pad. At least I seem to think so. The uh, frame usually is the beeper, but uh, let's have a look. Let's just drop some flux down on that since we are going to try and use that part. I don't know, it is a partial pad. Alright, my bad. No, oh, well I've unplugged both speakers now, yes. Flux, pull, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, Vladimir, I, I 
we do actually have a similar thing here. Like if you scratch your nose, you're basically lying. So yes, quite similar. Come on. <clears throat> if your nose is itching, you will be... <laughs> That's sort of funny. Alright, that should be good. That's plenty of solder on that middle pad. <laughs> People making up stuff. Fantastic. It's the internet after all. You can just say George Washington said that or Albert Einstein. Okay, now I'm going to look at this and yes, thank goodness it stayed there. Might just touch up around the corners there, but it should be good. Could be all the damn cat hair around you. But then again, I'm not allergic to my cat, so it's kind of a non-existent thing. Yeah, I should do those top ones too. Just in case. It's really unlikely, but just in case. Certainly not a rash. While it's cooling down, I'm just looking around, just in case I'm missing something obvious. Yeah, for all we know, it could be bad room. It'd be embarrassing. It'd be more embarrassing if there's a great big chunk of corrosion on it right now. I'm fairly sure the SMC is good on this because it does take the prop yeah, fairly normal amount of time to come up to green. It is an original Apple MagSafe, that one. <sighs> then again, it could be another portion of the SMC that's gone kaput. If this doesn't start flickering, I'm going to see what the current draw behavior is like. Plug it into my DC power supply. Yeah, here we go. Up to full speed again. Current sensing, maybe? I don't know. Gregory W. with the bottom ram slot. It's a case of you more than likely are going to just stuff up the, the top one, trying to fix up the bottom one. That's pretty much what it comes down to. So, technically, I suppose, yes. Practically, probably not. I did see someone 
on the YouTube MacBook repair, uh, not YouTube, Facebook MacBook repair page. They posted a video of them doing a complete CPU replacement and supposedly fixing things as well. I kind of wonder whether they just indirectly reflowed the connection and it came good. Alright, so it's 7.50. It's really not shifting off 7.50, which is kind of odd. Hmm. This one has a bad feel about it now. Full speeds when keyboard touchpad center is not plugged in. Oh, really? On this one? Oh, blimey. Well, I've just lost the green light off here. It's back again. Okay, we're up to 850 because that's probably got the fan spinning up. Uh, let's plug it into the chassis and see what happens. Who knows? Maybe it is actually running. Maybe it doesn't like my drive for some reason. Uh, I'm glad you think the same there, Pinoff. That's why I messaged. I did a reply on them. And I said, you know, it's like, you're saying it's a RAM fix, but you're doing a CPU replacement. And it's like, what's the deal? And, yeah. Uh, that's right, it was a CPU upgrade. I remember that now. They went from an i5 to an i7. I mean, I think that was quite talented, what they've done but I wouldn't actually classify it as a RAM fix. I would have said that was a happy accident off the side. sitting in properly. Yeah, oh, these boards can drive me insane sometimes. I think I'll just take the battery out. Finally get to use these piece of junk tri-wing drivers. Well, what are you for? No wonder it wasn't going in. It's a long T6. That might have come from... No, they're Phillips head. I don't know where you get that. Anyone know where the long T6? Where is that? That's weird. That's why it wouldn't sit in properly. I'm not sure where exactly on this frame you would normally have that. Feel free to let me know so that I can stop pondering. No, we'll leave.
the hard drive disconnected, obviously. Just plug these in just so that it holds the board in a position that I can, you know, I don't have to put screws in. It's a big hair, but I mean, I'm, I'm you know, pretty sure it's T6. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's T6. And I'd say it's about 8 or 10 millimeter long. I'm not sure that such a screw actually belongs in this chassis. Like I said, feel free to correct me. I just can't think of it. Man, that looks like it's been bashed up a lot. It'd be funny if actually the fault is in... No, it can't be in the trackpad, no. Super long screw it. <laughs> Could be a CPU related I issue. Might be the case. Oh, wait, you're talking about something. Oh, right, yep. Don't worry, Pianov, I just sort of mix, uh, mishmashed my thoughts then. Alright, let's see how we go this time. Okay, we're up and running. Seven forty, seven fifty. Still no display energized. We are definitely plugged in. And certainly no bong. Uh pushing on the SMC while powering up, that's gonna be fun. If it was pulsing, well, that came out loud enough. If it was pulsing up, I would consider I've got to shorten the audio circuit or something like that, because that's not an uncommon issue. Though again, like I said, I'm normally don't think you'd be able to get to fan spin state. Oh, that's just weird. Let's see if it responds to the keyboard holding it down. Okay, it's responding to keyboard on off. Uh, let's try press on the SMC as suggested by the audience. Same thing, really. It should have bonged by now. It's not. I'm pressing pretty hard. Hmm. CPU is getting warm. Like I said, we're drawing 740s, 800. The pain is still picking up. Alright. Let's remove the RAM and see if we get any activity. Start with zero RAM sticks and see if we get any beautiful notes. <laughs> Still 750. No noise at all. Yeah, 
The only way I can check for a clock signal at this point is if I put my multimeter on it and see if I can pick up some sort of clocking activity. It won't pick up... Oh, I will pick up 32 kilohertz. Um, it, though it does get swamped out by other noise. What bothers me here is that it hits 750 straight up. Yeah, there's no sequencing or anything. It's just 750 straight away out the door. There's also no activity on the um, DVD drive. There's no cycling of the DVD drive. So if I get another one of my 3115 boards, it should have some sort of staged power sequence from what I can imagine. It may just be cheaper for me to swap a board and move on to the next job. Uh, let's see. Steal the DC board. You guys the same? 25, 65, I don't think you are. Nope, you're different boards. I was fairly sure I had a uh, one with a no. Nope. Oh boy, here we go again. Let's find the part that Paul hasn't. There we go, we've got a bunch of them. Check v Yeah, that's probably a damn good idea. I completely agree with you. But I just want to see what this sequence is going to be. Just so that I can get a reference. We've got the same thing. No RAM, just got the fan plugged in. And I'll read it off as quick as I can. It's going to really be bad if I can't get some sort of solutions tonight. Okay. Then, looks like I'm wrong. This one goes straight to 700 as well, so it looks like it is just the behavior of these boards. Fair enough. It also means that we're pretty much on the mark for the power consumption too. All right. Paul proves himself wrong tonight. Shock horror. News at 11. Right, let's see if we can check our CPU V core now. The other possibility... No, wait, that shouldn't work. I was going to say the other possibility is maybe SMC lid is interfering, but then I sort of figured that should stop the fan even coming up. And I do not have any magnets on the desk anywhere. And it should still normally boot. And then once it gets past the initial phase, then it will shut the screen down and go to sleep. All right, V-Core. Yeah, I did move that super long... I've moved it. It's over on the magnetic pad now. Okay, I'm just going to see where my V core is on this top side, if it is even around anywhere here. Maybe on a test pad. Oh, yeah, there's caps in the middle there. I'll do it. Uh, the top of that one there. Uh, 
Hey, Richard. I'm getting my test leads tangled up a bit here. I'll be hopefully starting the reworking of the workshop yet again sometime next week. It's just a little hard. I've kind of got other things I've got to fix up around the house first. Okay. Guess there's a ground pad. Guess there's a V core action 1.1. So we are up and alive. Something's holding us down. Yeah, 1.1 volts. Yeah, it's going to be the same there, yeah. Plug in HDMI. Well, we should... The only trouble is we should be getting the DVD drive cycling. At the very least, that should happen. So it's not quite getting there. Let's push that down to the bottom one. You forgot to connect the wire from the cat top back to your clock chip base. Uh, UG, no, that um, is actually connected unless it jumped off when it reflowed. But I'll go and check that for you. But I'm fairly damn sure that it was still connected when I checked it. Actually, to the point where I'm going to have to start using brains and going through the rails. <sighs> yeah, there's nothing uh, interesting after about 20 or 30 seconds. It cycles that SMC. The green light goes away and comes back. Yeah, Andrew, it is disconnected. Look, they're. Remember also, this was not doing anything at all when it was just the board on its own. We only put it back into the chassis as a possibility that you know maybe we were missing something obvious. All right, but we'll we'll check that crystal cap line, see if that did jump off when we reflowed the other chip. Yeah, Jared's 1278. They're good machines. They're solid when they work. <laughs> yes, when they work. Yeah, that uh, wire is fine. Out of focus, but it's fine. Yep, see, connected. Sorry to be a disappointment there. Yeah. Realistically, at this point, it's pretty much almost ready to just be tossed out. Like I said, I mean, I can. I've got a bundle of already repaired three one one fives. So from a business perspective, I really should be at this point just going, well, I can't f fix this directly, so I'm just going to you know, toss it out and get a new one. One thing I just noticed that is concerning me is this. See how that? That is seriously charred. So I'm actually thinking maybe the PCA has been destroyed. So I'll bring it in closer. That is not from what I was doing before. 
but that does not look good. Try bias, if it doesn't work, we're screwed. Oh, thanks, Paul. <laughs> yeah, the great vote of confidence, realistic confidence, to be fair. So, yeah, I don't like the fact that that's been cooked up so badly. But, yeah, let's try a bias swap. Why not? Reflow that, yeah. It's a good idea, Vladimir. Good idea. I mean, I'm sort of thinking the chances of it being actually at fault are pretty pretty damn minimal but why not Chris I don't have a DSO for this so no I can't really tell it I'll be honest and say with a lot of these jobs if you get to the point where you've got to start hooking up things like DSOs scopes or you know logic traces then you've probably gone past the point of it being a worth repairing for all these sort of machines. But like I said, the edge bonding on the PCH there being like that, it doesn't give me a lot of confidence. What might have happened is the clock was at fault, that did get fixed, but in the process of it, it got cooked. Okay, time for another baggie. Check for platform reset. Ah, oh, uh, sorry, turn off. I'll get to that in a bit. We'll put the BIOS on and then have a look, okay? 3115 BIOS. I fix. Bastards! I took the BIOS chip off that one. Why would they do that? What's the point of taking a BIOS chip off a 3115? I suppose there's a quick easy fix for them. Are they 315? Yep. Hey Trevmar, welcome. Uh, late night for me now. And to be honest, I haven't solved squat. So, welcome to the late night of not fixing any damn thing. With your favourite Australian dingo biter. Nah, yeah, I don't bite dingoes. I don't know why I bother pickling the legs on this. It's a big chip, it's easy to come off with hot air. Call it habit, if you will. I guess half the problem is that it's a big chip, so you're trying to work on one side and the other side's still far away enough that it can get cold. Oh, Arnold G, yeah, that's a pretty classic thing around here. Yes, the old magpie taking out your eye. Funny thing is, we don't personally have any trouble with magpies. We've got a lot of them around here, but they do not give us any grief at all. But they know us pretty well. And that's the thing. Most of the time magpies are attacking you because they don't know you, or a lot of them have been abused in the past by kids, or people, jerks, things like that. And so they just preemptively attack now. Funnily enough, down in Tasmania, um, the magpies are rather polite, and they do not do that. That's kind of weird. Okay, I'm just going to put this stick in. This stick works pretty good for 
showing up stuff. Hey, we lost our SMC charge light. No, it's back again. Could be a bad connection on that actually. <laughs> Nothing yet happening. In fact, I don't even actually see. Normally, you should get an initial blip when the 5 volt rail comes up. So it's kind of weird I don't even get that. I'm just going to have a look see if it does come up. Okay, I did get it. I've just been missing it, that's all. So I'm being secretive here. I'm not going to let you see what the results are like. Maybe it is the SMC. It's fan spinning, but I've got no green light. It's hilarious. I'll try it with a genuine. Dennis Lord, I'm certainly not going to turn down my microphone. It's already marginal as it is. I think maybe you need to turn down your headphones, perhaps. I'm already at about 80% of gain on the transmitter, and then I'm putting another 10% on top. And I'm fairly sure I've got about 6 dB gain somewhere else in the system, just so that it can come up to a reasonable value. Uh, we've got nothing going on there. That, that's certainly dead as a door now. So before we forget, we will put the bias back on. Because otherwise what will happen is I will... Like, if we manage to repair it, I will sort of somehow forget that I've replaced the bias. So, we know it's not explicitly this at fault, but, you know, maybe there's issues still. Yep, better get the orientation right, or else we'll end up with a very warm chip. We had that the other day on the tech support. Someone managed to install their... I think it was the BIOS that they installed in backwards. Pianov, were you there? I'm pretty sure. Was it the BIOS they put in backwards and it was all getting very hot? Oh, crikey. Of course, they argued with us a little bit at first, but in the end, it turned out to be that was the case. Yeah, bias. Yeah, about two weeks ago. Yeah, that was it. Uh, it was good at least that they did end up, you know, um, doing the swap back and all working nicely. It's nice when you get an easy-ish win like that. Alright, let's see if we can get platform reset now on this. Let's get back to the basics, doing the difficult stuff, which is measuring stuff. Uh, okay. Oops. Now we've got to search. Platform reset L. Alright, we've got plenty of options
Where is that? Above the backlight driver. No, I think I've got you. Yep. Okay, it was spinning. Platform reset is 3.3. .3. All right. Ah, Dennis, you're on the headphones. Okay, that will explain that, yes. Yeah, okay. Alright, let's look at our power sequence. Let's see what's going on. Hey, Antonio. So I guess the question is, whereabouts are we on this? Okay, SMC reset we must have. Um, we've got vCore. Trying to think now. Do we have a... Yeah, it's just weird because, I mean, we're in SO, so we must have all SysPower good. Yeah, we're sort of, we're in the great desert of the unknown now, which is no fun at all. I can see a burnt resistor. Well, Pernov, given that the SMC appears to have junk coming out from under it, I think it's fair to say that probably isn't a bad option to have a look at, shall we say. Alan Lil, you can see a burnt resistor. I personally can't see anything. We're in this area just here. The trouble is, once again, with the camera, very hard to convey the subtleties of the state of components. Very hard. Solder 25, uh, well let's see, if you talk Macbook specific stuff, that was just from watching everyone else do it. Uh, st places like badcaps.net and then watching Lewis Rossman streams. And, you know, just picking up bits and pieces. Most of the time it's driven by if you've got a fault of a machine and you're trying to fix it, and you just sort of incrementally work your way up from there. Trying to learn it all at once. Some people can do that, but I don't think many can really. I think it's a case of you get a machine that's not working, you try to fix it, you learn from that experience, you add it to your database in your head, and then you go to your next machine. And over time you develop enough of a... What do you call it? enough of an experienced database that you eventually come across another machine where you go, hey, I've dealt with this before, and yeah, and you do. Uh, Wade, yeah, this is a 3115. Well, first thing I'll do is a reflow. I doubt it's going to work, but we'll do a reflow anyway. The chances are the balls are all mushed together underneath anyway. Brian, thank you for sticking around, and we'll see you next time. Uh, no, that's just a hair. Yeah, so this is exactly what I'm talking about. That little piece of hair looks like a crack, but it wasn't. And that was also a hair. It's very hard to discern through the internet, especially after it's been dealt with by YouTube.
Hey Space Cookies, welcome, Good morning. Who knows, maybe we'll get lucky and something will get fixed magically. Like RAM slots when you do a CPU change. I shouldn't mock that, but it certainly did seem to me that it was just a case of coincidental repair. I've got to be careful about mocking things. The universe seems to come back and hit me twice as hard. Checks 7402, 7403. Okay, I will do. I've played Dota occasionally, Dota 2, but not, not LOL. I mean, the fact that it's named LOL... It bothers me. It's like laughing at the game. 7402. Uh, 7402. Uh, Elf, it was just because the person was making an extra precaution of getting the wire to go to the pad of the crystal, but it wasn't required because the trace was actually intact. And I did check the crystal, so... Uh, 74... Okay, 74... For uh, where are you guys? You okay? What are you anyway? Interesting. Let's have a look and see what those values are, shall we? Uh, no rapid cool technology. No, I need to redo my workshop and get the new fume system built, and then maybe we'll have ourselves some rapid cooling. That'll be super cool. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned the resistor because there is a little bit of a tarnish on that one, but then, who knows. But we'll have a look. You might have hit on something there. Okay, so 7402, it should be 150k, so something less than that, but not dramatically. Okay, 149, that's smack on. And 7403 should be 182, and it probably should be the same, actually. 181 point, yeah, unfortunately that's completely intact. Sorry. Alright, so we've reflowed the SMC, it gave it a nudge when it was all liquid. Which in itself is a bit of a fun thing to do. If you've never done it before, uh, you really want to practice it a few times. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we've killed the SMC, have we? No, no, we're, we're alive. No. Just that bad DC and connector. Still no life. So, what have we got for votes here? Shall we look at replacing the SMC? Because I don't think we've got much chance here. Hey, Jamie Domini, welcome. Yeah, sadly, Jared, we've always had fan spin at this point. The problem is we don't have any um, post, so it's kind of a fake fixed. It's not a real fix. All right, brain spin, no brain, exactly. So what's the verdict, audience? Shall we spend a little more time and replace the SMC that I'm already doing without even waiting for you to answer? Seriously, 500 watching? Yeah, Jared, you're right. If the SMC doesn't change it, then I'll just swap it out for one of those other boards I've got because, quite frankly, I've got so many of them now. That's about time I started offloading them. We've already spent far too much time on this. I 
I really should have put flux under that. I'm kind of pushing my luck and just hoping that it will come off. You can tell I didn't have much flux under there because of all the Hershey kisses that have popped up. Alright. Another baggie. You sure those numbers are right? I've never had any. The most I've ever really ever had was 260, 270. Yeah, you're right, Andrew. Very little profit in these, exactly. So, let's see. Could you swap the board over and swap the hard drive? Um, yeah, you just. I'll just drop another board in and be off and running, no problems at all. Like I said, that's why this really doesn't make any business sense for me to be doing this. I really should have, after the first couple of things, if it didn't work, then I should have just said, stuff it, sort the board out, put that one in the bin, collect my money. I was going to say, collect $200 and pass go, but it'd be a little bit more than that. But to be fair, I am doing this somewhat for the sake of providing some sort of entertainment for everybody. And, you know, it's... Also a good chance to kick back and uh, yeah, maybe learn something on the way through for me as well. Yeah, maybe I will find we'll find the fault and we'll go well. The next time we encounter that, we know what we're dealing with. And I also really am a bit of a dum dum here, and I need to actually roll some leaded solder over this. Now, I know it seems a bit silly rolling lead at only for me to then wick it up. But it does help. Okay, that's good. Yeah, what have we got? Yes, the entertainment, exactly, pan off. Say so CPU, if not. Short 5 by We are getting the 5 volts on the USB. We're definitely getting that because I do get the initial flash when I plug in. So we know that the 5 volt USB is coming up. Speaking of which, Vladimir, why aren't you a mod? There we go. That's much better. Should have been a mod ages ago. Sorry to burden you with that, though. Alrighty. Time to get ourselves a donor. And drain the SMC off that. Let's see. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Which donor is coming with me today? Ah. Let's see. Look at that. How nice of them, they actually put some captain tape over it. Very nice of them. Very thoughtful. I, to be honest, am putting my money on the PCH in this case because of the amount of charring on the edge field. If there wasn't charring on the edge fill, I would go with the SMC. But yeah, because we've got the edge fill charring, I'm going to go PCH. But I'm going to do the SMC for the sake of entertainment, as we say. Oh man, this is that silicon. This particular silicon stuff doesn't like coming off. Some of them you get and it just picks up very nicely. Others, it seems to, it seems to be a different, harder 
type of material and it just crumbles off it doesn't actually come off as a nice clean piece yeah, it just wants to cleave away Sorry if I'm not responding to the comments so much. I uh, don't yet have that superpower to be able to be on the microscope doing this stuff and reply to comments, so you'll have to forgive me. We'll get there, we'll get there. Ah, hey, Bailey is me. Welcome back. What's the matter? Couldn't you sleep? I'll do really getting low on that flux. Looks like I'm gonna have to order some more flux. I probably should order it tomorrow. Otherwise I'll run out and I'll be left stranded and I'll have to use Vaseline or something. Right now I actually should be kicking back with a bowl of ice cream watching Supernatural Season 14. But no, what am I doing? I'm on YouTube instead. Come on. Yeah. I had to wiggle that one off a bit because that edge fill was still on the corners. Hopefully I haven't pulled any pads. Seems to be okay. There's a few grey ones there, but it should be okay. Tim, this is just board two. <laughs> yeah, not even three or four. This is just board two. All right. Let's bring back our SMC jig assembly setup. Obviously we need to get all that junk off the edges. Ice cream does not cause brain freeze. If you get brain freeze from eating ice cream then you obviously are not a professional ice cream eater. And I can eat so much ice cream it's bad for me. My current combination that I'm chowing into is vanilla and salted caramel. So it's two different ice creams and I just stick them together in the bowl and go crazy. I've got two weaknesses when it comes to food for sweet food and that is ice cream and snakes. So either of those around, they're usually not around for long. And then you'll usually find me cowering in a corner later, upset, because I ate it all. Ice cream's not good flux. No, I suppose not. Yeah, I'm not hitting this with the cooling anything too quick. Um, I've been running into a bit of an issue with SMCs where they have a tendency to bobble up under this sort of uh, brown mylar type layer. So I'm really trying to avoid that happening. And so I'm going to let it cool down more on its own natural rate. I'm probably being overly pedantic about it, but like I said, I don't really want to have to keep 
pulling off new SMCs. Yeah, salted caramel's in everything now. I've noticed that. You're right. It's like it's the flavor of the flavor of the year or the decade or whatever. Uh, see, this is what I'm talking about. This isn't bad. This will probably still be working, but you can see the delamination starting there. There's a little bit of a bubble down there, that slightly brighter area. It starts out like that and then it sort of gets to be a couple of balls wide. And it's quite frustrating. I've been getting a, a bit too much on the 165s and 3437s. I just need to wash that out, otherwise what will happen is that when I reflow those balls, the flux will wick up when it gets hot and melty. It will wick up under the stencil and it will ruin the job. Okay, that should be good. Boysenberry, now that is nice, yes. Um, I've got a couple of different alcohol dispensers here. I've got a pump one, and I've also got a bottle one. Now which one I use just depends on what task I'm performing. So okay, I've got these ones, and I've also got these ones. Now I have two of each. One is for just pure alcohol, straight out of the container. And the other one is for 20% um, cut of um, deionized water. Now the reason why I have the 20% cut version is so that when you're dealing with human grime and things like that, pure alcohol generally won't make human grime dirt move. It'll just, you get it to move slightly but not enough. But you throw that 20% of water in there, or even 10%, and all of a sudden, human grime and dirt just flies off. Okay, that's still not good enough. Just cleaning the stencil from before, because I didn't throw the stencil into the alcohol bath like I was supposed to. So now I'm basically reaping what I didn't do. Hey Anafan33, doing good thanks. Thanks for dropping in. How does the chip hold onto the plastic crossing? Uh, Yogi, I'm not sure what you're asking there and to be honest. Okay, so uh, I've got to go up this way. Marvellous. Alright, get some captain tape, hold that down, and then we can spray some balls over it. Hopefully we have a bit of success. Uh, always always losing the starter mark on my captain tape. Oh, where are you? There you are. Yeah, it's, it's sitting in a recess. Um, once I've done this, I'll show you. But basically, yeah, it's just lying down in a 
carved out area on the assembly. These are just simply like little NAND or chip holders that come with the generic board holders that you get from places like Union Repair. And it's just purely coincidental that one of them happens to be suitable for the SMC. That's all it is. It's just a coincidental sizing. And naturally, of course, I utilize it. waste all the balls again and so many balls go to waste I'm gonna have to get a new packet of that at least I know I can order just 0.35s in future rather than a whole selection okay let's roll it around That's actually pretty good coverage. Amazing. That would be about the... F oh, man, I celebrated too soon. Classic. <laughs> I was going to say that would be about the first time I have ever managed to get all the balls just by rubbing with my finger, but there was this one down here that I didn't get. Classic celebrated too soon syndrome. Yeah, I'm not worried about the oxidation at this point. This method seems to uh, sort it out pretty good. I may have one that lifts at the end, but overall it, um, it doesn't really seem to be a major problem. Okay, 20. And we've got another one that didn't go in. Okay, so we're at 420 centigrade and we're just doing 20 air. And what we want is we want for the balls to deform so they melt but they don't actually sit on the pads properly they just they get cranky they melt they go out of shape and they just sort of hang on to the side of the stencil wall like that maybe a little bit more down here okay now once that's done i put a teeny tiny amount of flux wait for them to stop melting just a small amount of flux And now I can reflow again, and they're not going to leap out like crazy frogs. Instead, they should just sit in nicely and reflow. Okay, that one's trying. We'll give him a minute to think about his decision. But overall, if you compare this to what normally happens, if you try to put flux down the first time, like if you just go balls in, flux down, then it's a major difference. Uh, LJ Rogers, just simply mood of the day, as it were. No specific reason. Um, I'm not really happy with my flux right now. I mean, not my flux, my paste. So I suppose that's an influencing factor. Alright, now we may still have some balls float out, but let's see how we go.
That looks pretty good to me. Yep. Yep. I'm happy enough with that. Beautiful. I'm going to reflow them one more time since they're now out of the stencil just to s just to make sure that they are properly sitting down because there could be one just sort of sitting there pretending it's on when it's not Looking good. We'll actually absorb most of that flux with the paper towel. Now we can finally get around to putting it back onto the board. Which way is this supposed to go? Pin one down to the towards the towards that. And if this doesn't work, well, I guess we'll just, um, we just would have had the practice. Worst things you can do on a Saturday night. I really do not like too much flux on the SMC um, board when you're putting it down. It's a little too easy to get it to just float off into oblivion. I would say at this point I actually have too much down on there at the moment. Alrighty. Back up to full performance. We'll know if we've got too much flux it'll tend to skittle off. Now I know some people will drop down a massive blob of flux and then just push the SMC in and it works for them and that's great. For me I've never had much luck with that technique. I've tried it but I tend to prefer the thin layer. Yeah, the thin layer just seems to work better for me. And I think that's an important thing to realize with a lot of this sort of work is that there are going to be different techniques that you see different people use. 
and you really have to just end up finding your own but try different things see how it is and then pick the one that works for you Sorry, I use a dime on top of the SMC to fix it on reflow. Yeah, that's interesting. Oh yeah, Amscope microscopes. In fact, most brand microscopes, they're all just from the same factory, really. You're kidding yourself if you think otherwise. If they look the same, about price the same, they're probably the same. They may have different color paint on them, but they're still probably the same. You may be able to get a um, superior optical binning. So, I mean, obviously all the optics aren't created the same. They obviously just you know, mass produce the optics. And they may have a um, quality grading program. And you know, maybe the optics that are worse go to the cheapest ones and the better optics go to the better brands. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if that was such a case rather than trying to go in and fix up any sort of malformed optics, grind them back or anything like that, it's just be easier to... So you can have that for cheaper and we'll give them more better ones to people who pay more. Travis, it is getting quite late for me indeed. Uh, this is definitely... If this doesn't up and run, then um, I've just got to go to bed and change this to a replacement board for the customer. Uh, Flexboard View has a new um, update, revision 1115 or 1115. It's in the beta beta section of the downloads page. You can get a hold of that. Um, it makes a few fixes, but there's a new couple of formats in there which are going to be important soon. I won't say much, but um, people will work it out sooner or later. Okay. What have we gone backwards here? Seriously? Oh no, there we go. <laughs> Ooh, worried me for a second there. Good job. Yeah, I didn't have great hopes. Because I'm pretty fairly sure it's the PCH that took the bullet in this one. Yeah, we're picking up that fan speed again and nothing's happening. No. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Bad news. Uh, I'm going to say that the PCH took the bullet on this one while it was being fixed for the real fault. And me throwing the fan around like that does not help. And the reason why I say that is if you have a look at it, you'll see. I mean, look at the damage. Imagine how much heat was required to do that. So, yeah. Let's see if I can replicate that on another board. Oh, wait. I'm not likely to have a 3115 that has CPU still attached to it. Oh, wait, this one might. There, here we go. Well, like I said, I think the real issue is that this area here was too much heat onto this section did something. Like so this is uh, one we haven't destroyed before. And I'm kind of curious to see how much heat it's going to take to make it do that. So we've got our hot air on it right now. And let's see how long it takes to get it to bake like that. Now this is at 460 and 110. Okay, we're already on it for a fair bit. We still haven't started baking yet. Still no bake. Nothing's happening. I can start to smell it though. Haha. 
Oh man. Now by now I would say that damage has started to happen and we still haven't started cracking that edge bonding yet. Still going. Still going. I should be able to knock most of these parts off around. Yeah, here we go. We're starting to crack now. Yeah, all this stuff. And we still haven't actually got the charred level yet. Let's go for maximum temperature. Maximum air. So, so I'm 51120. And there's our popcorning. That's dead. Okay, so I mean it didn't popcorn the PCH that I could see. But you get the idea of just how much heat is required to make that edge bonding crack up like that. So I mean you look at that. Now of course I had a bigger nozzle and so I was hitting a lot of this area, hence why it popcorned. But even still, if it's down in here, to get to that level, you know it's going to be... And of course, this would have been a right-handed person, by the way. So, it would have been directed around this sort of area. So, something bad's gone on under there. So, that was it. No, I'm not going to do the 19 volt to the CPU, I'm sorry. It's getting late. <coughs> Man, the fumes actually were quite bad for that. Oh. Give me some... Filter already needs replacing? Seriously? Oh wait, this thing's automated. Yeah, filter's fine. There's a automated filter timer on the air conditioner, so after I think it's about after 23 something consecutive hours, something. It tells you to replace it. They will clean the filter. Uh, oh, Lewis, bad timing, buddy. I'm out of here. But um, we've just got... All we've got is a 3115 that came in. Um, fan spin, no life. But in the end, it looks like they've cooked the PCH. Because, as I was just showing everybody, we've got this beautiful little creation down here. Nice and crusty. There's no popcorning that we can see, but with the quick, we had to get up to... It was about a minute that we held the hot air on the um, corner fill, and it still wouldn't cook up like that. So, yeah, that's dead, dead. Anyway, all right, so quarter past one in the morning. Time for me to go to bed. So I'll catch you all next time. I don't know if I've got any more machines to work on, but maybe we'll look at doing a revamp of the workshop might be a little more boring, but um, be something different for a change. Anyway, until next time, you all take care. Don't let the dingoes bite. I'll catch you later.